There actually is a class of tech company where the engineers kind of rule the roost. And that may sound appealing to you because you're an engineer. Uh, and by rule the roost, I've been in these companies before. And by rule the roost, I mean look down their noses at and kind of disrespect uh, other functions at the company, like sales or marketing or operations or IT, HR. These are all just around to support me, the engineer. I'm the god engineer. I'm exaggerating here, all right? Um, but uh, having a company where there is a explicit or implicit class system amongst employees is no bueno, okay? That is absolutely not good. It can work for some companies for a while, but it ain't a happy place to work, all right? And it's suboptimal now. It's suboptimal. I think about it as spokes in a wheel. A wheel is true and spins beautifully with, with, with very little friction when all the spokes are tightened to the same strength. And then the wheel turns. It doesn't turn if spokes are missing or they're shorter or what have you. And that's kind of how I feel about uh, all of these different functions at a company. They have to all be firing, on, this, uh, firing on, on, on all cylinders to make the machine really work. And I believe as we enter this kind of next phase of technology-oriented company and startup that's being created, I believe that uh, the, the two geeks in a garage story are going to become fewer and fewer. Um, suffer me. At the beginning of the web, the web was a flat, open, egalitarian space. Two geeks in a garage really could start anything. And as long as they were discovered by Yahoo or later Google, you know, both Stanford startups, uh, uh, magic things can happen. All right? Is that how you feel about the, the web and opportunity today? Is that, is that the landscape we see today out there? Are we, is, it, is it this great open flat web of opportunity? It's really not. It's really not. It is, there, are, there are these massive companies that control masses of eyeballs and traffic, have huge influence over, over what people see and what people do and what, what ads people see. And they get to decide, by and large, what companies become successful and what don't. And so when you go into, if you're going into a startup, my advice now would be make sure that, you know, marry a marketer. <laughs> If you're an engineer, marry a marketer. Have a marketer as a boyfriend or a girlfriend, <laughs> okay? Have that marketer be part of your company because you're going to need to be super clever about how to get your product in front of people. And then the next person you should get to know is the, per the money person. And the next person you should get to know is the operations person. Anyway, you need a full team to be discovered. It's much, much harder these days, I believe to break through the clutter and the noise than it was back when I started Expedia, which is, which is too bad. Now, that'll be the case until something new comes along. You know, Maybe there will be a new web. I can't really envision it. Some people think blockchain. That's what you know, blockchain is going to be the basis of a new wide open web. And you know, maybe, maybe. Um, I think more likely Alexa and Google Home and these voice, voice intelligences that are proliferating right now, more likely those are going to succeed. And as those succeed, the choke point gets even narrower for companies to fit through, OK? Consumer-oriented companies, you've got to come through the voice. And the voice is not a full screen with lots of links on it. The voice is one answer, probably, OK? Where should I go for dinner? What movies should I see? Get me airline tickets. You know, find me a house. Like, you get one answer in these things. So I actually think about this a lot. I think power is actually concentrating in the hands of these mega, mega global distributors uh, now, not dispersing.